Hey everybody, so uh, I'm going to put up the flocking AI extension stuff up today, so um, you should be able to get it, and I thought I'd take you through uh, the setup stuff. So what you'll find in the example scene, uh, what have I called it, I've called it fish test. Um, so, well, forget about the sheep. That's a work in progress. Okay, so there's a few things in here. The first one is the flocker, flocker here. Um, it's basically a radius value. The flocker itself, if we go to the content, is here. You might want to sort of rearrange that in your own project. So the flocker is the, the thing that controls all the static mesh instances that are going to be the, the actual sort of flock. Um, so going through the, the... So you get a sphere component, which is the sort of radius of it, although there is a separate radius. Yeah, I need to fix that up. Um, static mesh instance, set this up with the static mesh that you want in that particular flock so in this case we're gonna have this fish thing that I've got and it's pretty crap so you probably want to replace it other than that on the flocker number of flockers is the number of um, flock mates that are going to be in that flock so the first flock mate is always set as the um, leader and the rest of them are all followers in that that leader so to go through the various properties that radius again I'm gonna fix this up so that it only uses one radius from the sphere component but for now he uses two so you might have to synchronize them up by hand min speed doesn't really work for fish but max speed certainly does so max speed is the speed at each fish is uh, by default wonder update rate is for the leader to say how fast he recalculate when how often he recalculates where he's going so this is set to two seconds um min wonder distance is how far so basically the flock leader has to at least go this far for his next kind of position what it means is that it doesn't it, so that when you do a random generation it doesn't generate a point right next to the point you're already at so that's kind of a, a check there. I'll probably fix that up as well, to be honest. Uh, flock, mate aware, flock mate awareness scale. Awareness, awareness radius. That's how close... Uh, so let's just play it while we're doing this. Go up there. Where are we? The, the fish are all kind of towards the sun. So let's select the flocker again. So the flock mate awareness radius is the sort of how far each fish looks for neighboring fish so if i switch on the radius the the awareness radius rendering you'll see a yellow sort of ball around each fish that's how much how far each fish looks so you can tune that to basically say how much they know about each other uh similarly flock enemy awareness radius is the same kind of thing it's a it's a ball but it's around the um it's around these enemy fish and i'll talk you through that in a second so i've put that as a pink thing uh what else we got follow scale is how much we want to follow the leader so you could tweak that to sort of make them all go towards the same guy a bit more Align scale. Align is how much they want to um, all move in the same direction, essentially. You know, like how if one fish is traveling next to another, if you align it more, it means that they're both following sort of parallel to each other. Cohesion is how much they want to stay together. Separation is how much they want to be apart. And you want, you want to sort of balance those two out a bit. Um, Separation is usually a little bit better so that you get a bit of spread between the fish flea scale is how much they want to evade um, the enemies so uh, separation radius is 
basically how much it starts before it checks the separation value. So, so a combination of separation scale and separation radius will give you the actual separation value. Um, max steering force is just to cap the forces. Generally, you won't need to worry about that too much. Uh, max rotation rate is how fast the fish rotate, so you can tweak their sort of characteristics a little bit there. Obviously, these are all flags for drawing, you know, um, various vectors and stuff in the world to let me debug it. Um, can be useful to see what's going on. So this is them following a particular fish, etc. So that's uh, when they're trying to move away from a particular enemy. So the threats are like what they're aware of in terms of enemies. So let's just put, stop that. Um, so I did a quick, where are we? I did a quick kind of blueprint for these four guys to just sort of wander around that flock and I added them as threats. Um, now this blueprint for, for moving the enemies around isn't very good, but it's just a start. It basically just does a sort of random wonder kind of thing. I didn't know what kind of enemies you wanted, if they wanted to be animated and stuff, so that the threats are really just sort of actors that are in the world moving around. So if you can make the actors move around a bit more convincingly, then just make sure to add them to the threats list. Um, and you can see the source code, the other blueprint code for this guy. I suppose I'll just talk you through it. Let's just select one of those, edit the blueprint. Yeah, <laughs> it's horrible. No, I won't talk you through that, that's too scary. Basically just wanders around. Um, uh, for him, don't forget forget about that one you're not going to use that wonder frequency is how often he changes where he's wandering to wonder radius is how far from the kind of wonder flocker he's going to get move speed is how fast he's moving turn rate again sort of a how fast he turns basically this is all crap and you would you would not use this in a real game just make sure that you've uh, got something else in place so that's it really uh, that's the fish flocking thing. I'm going to put, I'm uh, going to make this sheep flocking stuff work next. And then uh, my intention is, so I'll put this version up on sort of a file hosting website. My intention is to do a proper um, set of tutorials on this stuff at some point, And also to make a GitHub repo so that everybody can get access to the source code for it all. Because, you know, I want to do a bunch more extensions. This is the first time I've done a plugin, and it's a little bit, yeah, I'm not, not entirely sure I like the plugin interface yet. And I'm sure that that's going to crash and burn stuff in new versions, so I just hope to be able to update it a bit more. So there you go. Hopefully you'll uh, find something interesting in it. Uh, Give me feedback if you have got any changes that you request. I've got a bunch of changes that I already need to do. So um, don't think this is the, the last code build, but it'll get you started at least. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you later.